First of all, I have to thanks uh, Kubernetes Sri Lanka organization giving me the opportunity to uh, present this kind of uh, webinar for Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan community after a long time. So uh, talking about, OK, let's uh, because first need I need to tell you about one thing about this Kubernetes security uh, AWS. So this this um, topic is a little bit um, we need more time to describe and go to a little bit harder it's a little bit hard to uh, uh, give more details within one, like one hour if i am going with this uh, this kubernetes security whatever security topic definitely we needed uh, a kind of a boot camp for two three days anyway i'm trying my best to give you some idea about how we can implement the kubernetes security and what are the main areas uh, we need to uh, consider when we are working with the Kubernetes with AWS. Uh, let's get, get the ball rolling now. Um, uh, uh, as I mentioned, so talking about me, I don't need to talk a lot about me. So as a general, I'm, I'm working as a solution architect and the DevOps engineer nearly nine years in Sri Lanka and also the uh, New Zealand. Uh, last four or five years, I'm working at New Zealand, uh, the different companies like this. And if you need any more details about me, or if you need to know about so what I'm doing, what are the things I'm interested in, and stuff like that, so I'm generally uh, available in this LinkedIn and also uh, GitHub, a uh, few other uh, community uh, based um, URLs are there. You can go through it. So, talking about the Kubernetes, why I'm doing that kind of presentation, I have wide area experience with the Kubernetes and also the uh, working as a um, consultant who is doing the uh, digital transformation with the different types of company. So hopefully um, um, you guys um, happy happy with me what I'm doing. So let me know if there are any concerns and the questions were after I did the uh, this presentation. Uh, uh, when I talk about the Kubernetes and the uh, security, uh, it's a little bit hard to talk about uh, wider area, it's just I just grab uh, with the AWS especially. So when you are working with the Kubernetes and trying to set up in the AWS, there are different ways you can set up in Kubernetes with AWS. These are the few uh, solutions which you are using currently in the Kubernetes. There are a lot of things, a lot of, there are a lot of tools you can use uh, to uh, set up the Kubernetes, especially like uh, most people, the most famous one in the Kops, uh, and also the QSpray is a little bit older one. And also previously it's coming with the um, cloud formation. Now it is cloud coming with the Ansible. Talking about the Kops, it's kind of an open source tool, which most of people using for the Kubernetes orchestration back in it is Terraform. So if you guys are familiar with Terraform and the, uh, you may use Kops. And it has a lot of features and plugins and we can easily manage the Kubernetes uh, with Kops, especially in the production environments. Uh, QSpray is also not bad. You can non not only the um, AWS, you can use other other open, uh, other open cloud environments like GKS. If it is you have the bare metal, you can use uh, QSpray also. So the other, other thing, this, the third one is the AWS EKS. That is the managed service, which is in uh, AWS. Um, if you are working with the production in large production environment, you may know about the still EKS is not good solution, but there are some limitations. So, but not too bad. So still they are growing up. They have different types of tools like EKS CTL, which is also growing up. And if, if you want to use any other third party tools like Rancher, if you have a little bit uh, more money for your project or you have a lot of funding and you need to go for the enterprise products, you can use Rancher. Oh, there are a lot of tools other than that. And you may use on Terraform, you need to set up um, EKS, uh, EKS in the uh, uh, AWS. So uh, EKS, EKS CTL mostly use CloudFormation in the backend. Uh, it's it's create the CloudFormation uh, templates. So, but you don't need to worry about that. You need to use same as the Kops. If you guys are familiar with Kops, you can have one YAML file, then you can trigger it and that will be make your Kubernetes environment. So uh, now go through with the uh, the main topic that is Kubernetes um, security. 
Kubernetes with AWS, so if you go for like any, um, if you Google it, how to implement Kubernetes, or what are the best practices, Kubernetes in AWS, you may find out a lot of pages and a lot of discussions, a lot of uh, areas like. Mainly, uh, if you go for the security wise, we can categorize Kubernetes security in different ways. Like mainly infrastructure security, port security, running security, runtime security, and the network security, and the multi-tenancy, identity access, and these are the other things you need to consider. So today's, uh, what I'm going to do is, we have only one hour, so what I'm trying to do is, I'm just trying to talking about few main 10, uh, 10 topics, so 10 uh, main points. So I'm uh, I'm go through with most of the, uh, the major areas, which uh, if you are doing any uh, pen testing or if you are doing any Kubernetes hardening in your environment, what other things you need to consider mainly. But I need to tell you one thing, so, but this Kubernetes is kind of a uh, application which have a lot of components. So working with the Kubernetes and working with the live environment, you need to think about your workflow and also your uh, repository management and stuff like that. It is kind of a bigger flow, not only the Kubernetes, you need to make sure how you are doing the continuous integration. So the whole process should be secure. So anyway, let's get the ball rolling about the main points. So as I mentioned, I'm trying to um, give you some kind of pain points regularly, people talking about with the Kubernetes and also the what are the best practices we can uh, implement in the Kubernetes. So first thing is any software, if you're using whatever software, definitely you need to up to date it to the latest version. If not, it could be vulnerable. Let's say you are using the Java application, you are running on the Node.js, definitely talking about Node.js, definitely you need to up to date, otherwise it could be vulnerable. So time to time, new, new uh, issues coming back. So you need to make sure your application is up to date and uh, it should it should run with the latest versions. So the hardest thing is if you are running with the Kubernetes in the large environment, how we can do that? So what are the things we need to consider? So that is the main question. So any, anybody can say you need to up to date. So the hardest thing is how you um, uh, perform your updates. So that is the main thing. So when we considering the Kubernetes, so as I mentioned, the previous tools like Kops or EKS, so mainly talking about Kops, Kops has or its own uh, rolling updates and the procedure to update the Kubernetes and, um, and the EKS also same. So talking about the release version, so you need to make sure you have the latest uh, among like like three versions only recommended the Kubernetes for latest three versions. You need to make sure you are running on the Kubernetes with that uh, latest versions in the production environment, especially. So if you guys working with the Kubernetes last few years, definitely you guys know about this bigger challenge happened in 2018, which is uh, one of famous uh, vulnerability happened in the Kubernetes uh, that I mentioned in this. Uh, what happened was uh, that version was V1.10 um, uh, and the this, these three versions, I, I, um, um, so if I if I highlighted it, it's these three versions, uh, uh, 11, uh, 1 10, 11 and one uh, v 11 and also v 1 uh, 12 versions. The long time back. So what happened was uh, at that time there's an issue bug with the Kubernetes API. So easily the when 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 port writing in the your Kubernetes environment at that time the port is vulnerable or somebody attacker comes to the port easily can communicate to the Kubernetes um, uh, API uh, which can control easily. So that is the major uh, concern that happened long time back. But anyway, anybody uh, everybody uh, uh, working together and uh, most of the clusters they up update. But some companies I heard about they had some issues at that time. So mostly. When you are working with the tools like software anyways, so you need to consider these kind of issues. So talking about um, how we can secure when we are using the Kubernetes and how we can maintain that uh, env your environment, so making it not vulnerable. So that, that is the main um, problem, main, main task, as I mentioned earlier. So I suggest, let's say, if you have three kind of environments, so five environments, uh, like let's say Dev, um, uh, Dev, uh, in, in dev and QA and staging and production or whatever the environments. I'm suggesting when you have a cluster, uh, five clusters, definitely uh, every three months you can get the uh, stable Kubernetes version. So what you can do is you can schedule proper um, rollout for the your pre prod environment first, check whether your um, uh, components are working, is there any all APIs are there which affect your environment, definitely you need to ro rolling up 
so your third party to uh, third party applications and stuff like that maintain your um, uh, availability of the production not doing it like say, suddenly so i also face uh, when i working with the environment i also face few issues while we doing uh, auto updates so yeah this it is challenging but if you implement properly the uh, your monitoring tools so which you can uh, easily get the alerts from what happening in your environments so that will be the the main um, points so i will discuss about those uh, audit logs and the monitoring solutions later so so that is the main thing first we need to up to date our kubernetes maintain the kubernetes versions uh, when you, if you want to secure your environment so the second part is the most other important thing so hardening about the node security so i am not talking about um, a lot about the kubernetes um, uh, components because i hope you guys know about the kubernetes components and you are familiar with uh, you guys working on the kubernetes i feel like that so i'm just following the i'm just continuing the presentation like that so maybe uh, anybody uh, maybe um, have uh, maybe anybody as a beginner so sorry about that but i need to continue this presentation who have the kind of a actually the uh, uh, who have the experience in the kubernetes uh, sorry about that uh, okay uh, talking about the server hardening so you know about when you spawn the kubernetes cluster you have mainly two components one is your masters which are running on your kubernetes administration uh, applications uh, as example api and scheduler stuff like that so other one is nodes basically your application running on that so nodes those are the two main components when you when you set up it in the aws especially like kubes so you you control whole infrastructure but if you are considering in the eks uh, you are only controlling your uh, nodes so but so your masters don't need to worry about they have the if you are, if you have if you have in the pci compliance or any other compass definitely they they will give you that uh, uh, compliance so you only need to worry about the lot about the masters uh, but the other hand if you are if you are managing your whole cluster you need to worry about you need to consider about the security with the whole infrastructure so in that case so not only the kubernetes uh, first first thing about the kubernetes the, the kubernetes wise you need to go for each and every nodes and you need to manage so about definitely you are iam so which uh, sorry ami which uh, you are using in the kubernetes uh, 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 Kubernetes nodes and the masters. So you need to scan uh, your environment time to time. It may be like every um, every every day or every week, depending on your requirement. So you can use different types of tools to do that. So basically, you can set up. Uh, what you can do is in the uh, EKCTL also you can um, set up the Bootstrap uh, to implement your software or whatever third-party tool uh, agent running on your um, uh, running on your node uh, uh, let's say if it is linux it is running on the linux so then you can uh, see uh, 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 see your vulnerabilities what are the os vulnerabilities run, running on your environment you can use aws inspector to do that you can use standable io or whatever other tools um, you may uh, you can use depending on your requirements or depending on your budget so make sure your um, os is running on uh, perfectly and it has no vulnerabilities so what happened if it is vulnerabilities happen what you can do is you can regularly update check whether uh, what are the latest updates and uh, most of the uh, softwares like inspector or enable io only telling you what is the vulnerability so uh, then the next step is you need to define how you going to um, rolling out the uh, those vulnerable uh, um, solutions for the vulnerabilities so the second thing is the controller network access um, uh, uh, control the network access to the uh, access and the sensitive ports so kubernetes is running as i mentioned the kubernetes is running on a lot of uh, um, tools and the uh, api and also other uh, services running on there uh, with the different types of ports so if you go for the kubernetes uh, and find out what are the main ports make sure those ports are only running on only allow for your local environments that means the local vpc and also you can uh, not only the vpc you can uh, a segment into the your private subnet also and the other thing is the kubernetes api which area which uh, let's say which vpcs which uh, areas you need to uh, expose your api 
that's only that area you can uh, expose. As example, you have multiple VPCs and you have one, one VPC uh, for like, you know, the uh, accessing for the Kubernetes nodes to doing the, um, doing the administrations and, you know, stuff like that. So better to have a different VPC and set up there like a jump host and accessing uh, through the jump host to your nodes. So definitely you need to use like, a, um, as I mentioned in here, uh, you can use definitely the VPN uh, and VPC segmentation properly, then you can access for the nodes. Uh, that's also make sure your nodes are secure. So to do that in AWS, you definitely know there are two um, stateless and stateful firewalls set up. You can, you can set up in the ACL and uh, security groups. You can make sure your security groups and ACLs are uh, properly set up. Um, and the other thing in the node security, let's say uh, when you are designing the Kubernetes uh, cluster, better to have uh, designed uh, different types of node groups depending on your application. Let's say you have multiple microservices which needed different types of flavors, like I mean, different types of um, uh, applications are there. You can divide it into multiple uh, node groups. Let's say uh, if you need a uh, special specific, uh, um, AWS uh, um, instance type. So depending on the type, you can make sure you have the different types of node groups. That's also good practice when you are doing, that also makes sure uh, you have the different types of uh, area, uh, different size, types of node groups that will be um, help you to uh, secure your environment if something happened in specific node groups. But that's also depending on the attack or uh, security, uh, security effect, uh, depending on the time. Better to have different types of group. It will be help you to manage the your microservices and also the security. Um, and the other one is always you need to restrict your access, especially for the administration. So if you you don't need to have any like if you have a DevOps cluster, you don't need to have access to developers to giving them to access to the uh, nodes, manage the nodes and stuff like that. Definitely make sure you tidy up your uh, access from the Kubernetes main nodes and the masters and stuff like that. So, and also you can use AWS CloudTrail or AWS VPC logs definitely to the monitoring, uh, like monitoring tools like Prometheus and EKS, New Relic. So whatever data dog, depending on the requirement or depending on your budget. So um, you can make sure you are monitoring your access levels and also um, who going to access and when going to access stuff like that. Make sure your environment uh, everything is recorded somewhere. That will be easy to find out if some miscellaneous something happened in your environment to identify what's happened and when happened. Okay. The other thing is the talking about the hardening of the Kubernetes uh, nodes. You need to make sure hardening your APIs. So talking about the API. So if you, uh, I just share this link. If you go for this link, you can find out there are different uh, arguments you can pass through when you are deploying the Kubernetes with either uh, Kops or uh, mostly EKS. You uh, it support by most of the uh, security components. But if you are managing the Kubernetes with Kops, you need to make sure you uh, use like um, uh, proper. Um, arguments like as example, I mentioned to make sure you disable the unauthorized anonymous access, uh, TLS access uh, for the um, API. So that is one example, that's the major example. So main thing you need to consider. And also other one in the secure your ECT, ECTD. Uh, ExecTD, uh, that is the um, key value we store, which have all the, uh, your data, uh, like uh, your, your uh, credentials and stuff like that, keys, everything is there. So Make sure you encrypted your ADCD and also make sure you uh, enable the TLS there and uh, make sure your ADCD is secure always if something going wrong, that will be the main problem. So if somebody access the ECTD, it can be, you can, that guy can do a lot of things. So make sure your ADCD is in proper uh, secure way. So other one is the kubelet. Uh, kubelet is running on the each and every nodes, which is running on your uh, microservices. Make sure your kubelet also uh, running on the proper arguments, like as example, anonymous access uh, or uh, false flag, and, and as, as example, the admission control. So talking about the admission control, the Kubernetes, uh, it has uh, admission control, which uh, control your Kubernetes environment. So as example, you can restrict um, your nodes which what application you want to run and what applications you not want to run. And there are a lot of other features in admission control. I will 
talk about that a little bit later. So you can make sure limit your uh, nodes to restrict your nodes, which is not running uh, any uh, anonymous stuff in your nodes. So, so that is that is another concern. Definitely, you need to consider. So as I mentioned, the Kubernetes included many more components, uh, and all the components like Kubernetes scheduler, uh, uh, Kubernetes scheduler, with, which is used to schedule your stuff, and the Kubernetes controller manager that is control everything. Those ones also you need to consider what are the uh, what are the uh, what are the main plugs you need to uh, uh, you need to pass through when you secure your Kubernetes environment. Uh, and also the other thing is make sure when you're hardening, hardening in your Kubernetes environment. So definitely make sure you have the logs shipping into the central login. You can easily uh, see what are the things happening in your env uh, environment, uh, spe specifically these components. So that will help you to make sure uh, your environment is uh, happy or if it is something going wrong. Uh, so the other third uh, thing is if you definitely if somebody come into your office, uh, your office environment, and want to do the pen testing, definitely pen testers, they are looking at this one first. So that is the uh, cloud metadata access. Talking about the cloud metadata access, uh, cloud metadata is used to get the details from the, um, let's say, uh, let's say if you are running in the um, EC2 in your um, EC2 running on the application. So if you assign a IAM role into the EC2, so or if you, um, let's say, if you need to know about uh, through the through your EC2, you need to know about what are the things uh, assigned into that EC2, what are the permissions, and what are the uh, details of the uh, instance and stuff like that. AWS Metadata API, you can help you to do that. So when you have access to the API, there are a lot of things you can see. Uh, you can you can see your AWS um, uh, uh, IAM access and stuff like that. And also not only that, through that you can. Uh, you can get uh, other few details also, other other specific details, which is can be harmful for your environment. So why why that I'm saying that is harmful? It's because of uh, if you are running the um, uh, Kubernetes in your environment, it has uh, Docker 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 uh, pods running on your environment. Let's say the Docker has some kind of uh, feature. Actually, it's it's a kind of a vulnerable feature, mostly that is talking about everybody. Let's say you have a node running on the, uh, let with the a a IAM. Uh, if you're running the application in the same uh, node, uh, which is running on the uh, your uh, pod, that pod inherit that uh, node IAM role. So then if you, if you curl, uh, as example, if you curl like this, so curl like this 196, that is the IP for the uh, uh, um, AWS metadata. So if you curl it, you can easily get the uh, that uh, particular node uh, permission, uh, node, uh, it, it inherit actually it working as a node. So you can see everything which is which has the access to that node. So that is the bad thing, then you can inherit. So not only that in the Kubernetes uh, chaos, so you have the S3 access, then you can go for the S3 buckets, which are have the uh, which have the uh, secrets. Then you can easily get the secret from that pod. So that is the uh, that is the main disadvantage when you are using the Kubernetes with AWS or whatever uh, any other cloud provider, which uh, running uh, running with uh, uh, Kubernetes. That will be the main issue. So people, lots of people know about this issue, and there are a lot of solutions you can set up to. Uh, uh, so you can set up to not to happen anything uh, like this. So I think you can get some understanding what I'm doing is here. So I, I can get the, uh, all the data in here, then you can curl the particular uh, um, uh, metadata details and through that, so I am already uh, assigned the IAM role into that spot. So you can run um, S3 bucket. So normally KOPS, uh, S3 buckets locate like this, you can get the cert. And through the admin cert, you can you can you can do you can do the kubectl easily and um, run any pod in your environment, and you can do a lot of things. So, so to to um, to make sure not to uh, happen this thing, what you can do? There are a lot of ways you can do. You can set up uh, the most people doing actually the third one that is kube to IAM that is already coming with the EKS. Uh, that is kind of a different tool you can set up in the um, your environment that you can control your IAM uh, access uh, and IAMS, IAMS, IAM role control uh, 
uh, from the pod device. Let's say if you are if you if you are pod want to access the S3 bucket, if you let's say if your pod want to access the DynamoDB, so you can give you the control IAM control to the pod only that particular service through that cube to IAM. So and the other one is the network policy. You can set up a network policy, but not need to actually access the metadata. So like this, if you are if you are using most of the people, um, if you are not uh, familiar with the cube to IAM, most of the people use AWS credentials uh, like uh, API keys to authenticate. Uh, you are, um, um, get the uh, get the access. So that time you can totally block your metadata from the pod. So that is the other way you can secure your environment. Uh, easily, let's say if you are running on the little bit older cluster, so you don't need to have a time to, uh, let's say you don't have a time to do the cube to IAM for now, so you can go for the, the solution first, and the meantime you can uh, change it, uh, these kind of solutions. Um, actually, the nowadays uh, it is coming with like different solutions. Not to, not only this ones. The EK is coming with the different types of uh, new solution in the near future. Definitely, that will solve this problem. So. Uh, the fourth one is I need to talk about uh, uh, RBAC. So RBAC is role-based access control. So when you're running with the Kubernetes, so let's say if you have different types of microservices running on different namespaces, so how are you going to um, give the uh, raw, uh, uh, proper permission to your application? So so that is the uh, um, um, that is the RBAC coming to the uh, Kubernetes uh, coming to the stage so rbac support for 1.6 kubernetes uh, version so uh, it has two components that is uh, role and the cluster uh, cluster role so mainly cluster role is let's say if you need to manage your whole cluster control you can use cluster role it not specify with the role so it not specify with the namespace let's say you have multiple namespaces in your cloud uh, in your environment what you can use is you can use roles to control the each and every uh, namespaces, uh, namespace wise applications. Let's say you are one service need to talk to um, specific um, uh, another service. What you can do is you can create a service account and um, create a role which uh, enable you access, which uh, which which um, give you a proper access. That service account uh, add to the role and you can um, uh, do what do what the, you know, the application can easily get the access from that. So this is a good example for that thing. So what you can do is you can create a, this is the cluster role, which is give you, let's say the cert access um, for the get uh, watch uh, and the list that will be applied for you all the namespaces. So let's say somebody need to access these certs. So no need to um, uh, block the namespace wise, you can create this cluster role and you can bind that to the cluster uh, groups, depending on, let's say your manager need to uh, read the stuff, or if you have an application, uh, need to uh, uh, need to have this uh, credential, uh, needs to have this permission, you can create a service account and run the service account uh, in your deployment. So that is the easiest way to giving the permission to the user base and the application base uh, in the RBAC. So, other thing is, as I mentioned, the roles. So if you need to tidy up your uh, environment in the namespace basis, let's say you have multiple namespaces, you need to tidy up the users and the control, uh, the namespaces wise, you may use this uh, um, uh, RBAC control, the role based uh, permission. That is really important. Uh, let's say if you, before these 1.6, it's really hard to control the permissions and the Kubernetes. That will be a painful time. So, but now we have the more control. So if you need to, uh, if let's say if you have multiple uh, developers working with the Kubernetes and multiple application need multiple uh, different types of uh, access controls. So you, you, you need to uh, make sure you put right um, uh, RBAC set up in the right uh, way. That is more important, no need to, give you more permission for the applications which is running on. Uh, sometimes uh, if you are struggling with some uh, application issues, you will give you more in, uh, more permissions and troubleshoot, then will you will forget something uh, to, uh, you will forget that. So which permission you change. So make sure the all the permissions are recorded and make sure you are always uh, review the policies uh, in the Kubernetes applications. That will be, should be a best practice when you are doing the deployments. Uh, talking about this five, fifth one, um, uh, that is the Tila, uh, that is Helm to Pain. 
So everybody know about the Helm too. Uh, if you are deploying the Kubernetes uh, containers, you can use Helm to deploy this stuff. There are there are multiple ways you can do that, but most people use Helm. That is the uh, server client uh, base application. That is this Helm two, which is used to deploy the uh, templates into the Kubernetes. You can have multiple versions. Depending on the version, you will deploy your applications like. The release it will be help you to do the continuous integration and the develop uh, uh, delivery, but the pain point with the Helm is so if you are putting the Helm with uh, an auth that will be a bigger trouble. So you can this, see this slide. So there is I'm running on the pod uh, there and I'm trying to get the uh, uh, Tiller. Tiller is a pod which is running on the Kubernetes. Which if you deploy in the uh, Helm through the Helm to uh, Helm. So what Helm doing is Helm talking the Tiller. <coughs> Sorry, Tila pod and uh, Tila talking to the Kubernetes. So uh, that is the um, pain point for the Helm two. So in that case, so uh, you can see uh, I just try to set up a Helm in the this pod and also uh, and uh, using this uh, <coughs> using this application I can easily output the Tila. Um, token, so which is talking to the Kubernetes cluster. If you have that token, so if you have no uh, no SSL uh, uh, integration with the Tiller, so you can easily talk to that, and you can get the credentials for the Kubernetes. Then what you can do is, uh, as a as a user, what you can do is you can create a static pod, so like this, <coughs> whatever pod, static pod, or you can deploy a pod into the Kubernetes. And uh, I just mount the root volume in here, which is another bad thing. If you mount the root volume like this, it will inherit the the node uh, root volume into the pod. So you can see I just uh, the deploy through that token, uh, and you can I, I just create a secondary pod in here, and uh, this is the pod I deployed as a secondary pod. So then you can see. Uh, I just cd into the uh, pod, uh, 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 root directory. Then you can check the host name. You can see uh, that pod have the access to the master node. So that is the bad thing. So then you can edit the your uh, authorized keys and <coughs> copy your key. <coughs> you don't need to worry about this pod. Kill the pod, and the next time you have the access. So that is the other pain point. If you have the Helm running on your environment, make sure. You have the better control your helm with the tiller. So the town now uh, today we don't need to worry. Helm three is coming back. It not have any tiller. We don't need to worry about it directly call into the a a a a Kubernetes API. So you can talk to the API. There is a it's remote tiller. Replace the client server uh, with the client library architecture uh, secure in now in um, user base and also it has. Uh, Stored in in cluster certs and the release objects metadata in uh, has changed and also release persistent on the release namespace basis, not the Tila namespace. The previously, what you need to do is you can create a namespace and uh, uh, running the Tila in the namespace and you deploy this stuff with the different namespaces. So in that case, what you do is you need to have a, a ABAC access to the Tila to deploy the whole stuff. That means Tila have more access, which uh, somebody. Access the Tiller, it can do a lot of things. So in this case, what you can do is namespace-based uh, deployments. So it which help you to um, do the more secure deployments. And uh, let's say if you have currently a Helm two running on your environment, better to go for this application, uh, Helm two uh, three. <coughs> sorry, that will be. <coughs> sorry about that. That will be help you to. Uh, convert your Helm charts into Helm 3. So I recently did that. Actually, that is really fun time. And you have like a lot of issues sometimes when you're doing that. Like some, uh, let's say, some third party applications uh, not supposing, supposed to work with the Helm 3. Uh, anyway, that pain point is still, still, uh, <coughs> is still it is uh, work with the different third parties. Like, let's say you have uh, third party tools like let's say different agents you are running on your Kubernetes which have Helm to Helm to old uh, support APIs so it will be not work with the Helm three but most of the time it's working fine 
So you need, you may have to rewrite your, those Helm charts into Helm 3 sometimes. But make sure if you are still running on the Helm 2, what you can do is, uh, uh, what you can do is you can set up the Tila SSL. So that will have Handshake and it has the uh, um, SSL based uh, authentication for the uh, uh, Kube API, uh, Kubernetes API. And you need to pass the uh, your keys while you are doing the um, Helm deployments. So that is the other thing you can do if you are running with the Helm, Helm tool. Okay. Uh, we discussed a little bit um, uh, longer discussion about different issues like so, but when you are talking about the Kubernetes environment, definitely you need to working on the your containers which is running on the Kubernetes. I think long a uh, few weeks back, I think the, um, the uh, one of lady uh, just described about these container ish, uh, best practices in the um, uh, this uh, webinars. So, but I didn't got the chance to actually uh, join to that session. But anyway, mostly. Maybe she will be she she already cover these things. But when you are working with the Kubernetes, definitely you need to follow the better uh, workflow for the your container images. So because your containers running on the Kubernetes, if it is vulnerable, your Kubernetes, um, if you if you uh, put uh, some vulnerable uh, container in your environment, that will be break your whole stuff. So make sure you tidy up your uh, container images. Uh, I will go through what are the things we need to think about when you are doing that. Need to have base minimum image. If you have like images, I, I can, I work with the different companies, a lot of companies, uh, uh, they don't talk, uh, think about the security uh, when you are uh, when you are doing the, uh, I, I did a lot of projects and stuff like that, doing some stuff. Most of the things, uh, developers and the and also the, a uh, lot of people, not only the DevOps, so everybody not talk, thinking about the image, uh, base image versions and not up to date them. Definitely you need to consider about this. So you need to have a minimum image, which not running in uh, the stuff which you are not treat, uh, needed. Let's say you are building tools and uh, stuff which uh, you are used to build this stuff and stuff like that, especially troubleshooting stuff, no need to uh, put anything. If you are running Java, put only Java running on the container. Up to date the image and also uh, use uh, IM uh, and the other one is talking about the images. The second thing is image registry, so Docker registry. Let's say if you are using um, uh, AWS, so you may use AWS ECR, you may use Harbor, you may use your own Docker registry, which is running on your environment. So make sure uh, either you need to use, if it is AWS, like let's say EKS, definitely no need to worry about. You, you, you can control it from the IAM roles and the, whatever the private links. So it it, it, may, it will be secure. So the other one is, so uh, other one is if you have a, a Docker registry running on your environment, better to, better to uh, have a proper uh, uh, network segmentation for the Docker registry and better to have a authentication process for that. No, not to giving, uh, not to give that more um, um, not permission for the Docker, Docker registry. The other one is if you have a, a Docker registry running on the different environments, like let's say uh, environment means different accounts. Definitely, you need to make sure you are uh, properly sharing your account uh, uh, through the accounts, or if you have a VPC peering better to set up proper VPC peering uh, to access the Docker registry, uh, which is, which you're running on your application. And not only that, don't use public Docker registries to you are downloading stuff. Let's say the public Docker registry has some issues. So it is, um, it is happening some issues. So better to have your own Docker registry uh, and download it to your own Docker registry and use that. I'm suggesting that I know that it's a little bit, little bit hard task, but better to use that way. That will be more secure your environment. So, <coughs> um, other one is, as I mentioned, no need to set up any other unnecessary tools like curl, wget, especially bash, or uh, running on your uh, running on your um, pods. So, uh, remove those things. Only run what application you are running. So, uh, and the uh, um, up to date your images, as I mentioned, scan your images. You can use either uh, either ECI Im image scanner or Clear or whatever anchor to uh, uh, scan your images regularly and get the reports. If any 
Yeah, you can actually use this one for your pipeline. Let's say you have the pipeline. So in the first stage, when you are building your application, uh, at the same time, you can uh, after after the building up a building point uh, before going to the uh, either you when you push into the application or after uh, push into your uh, pre-prod environment or whatever in whatever environment. Uh, not only the pre-prod, you can use actually the environment also before pushing that. So you may scan the images. So <coughs> if if something going wrong, you need to do whatever the uh, vulnerability tools uh, mention about your issues. So, so that is best, pra best practice when you are using the pipelines and the CID CD process. Uh, uh, set up your scanners in your pipeline. Uh, you can use KRL. I am really uh, I'm like this KRL. It has like different features. So you guys, uh, if you need it, try this one. That's really good. And also the Cube uh, Docker Hub benchmark. You can use the benchmarking your Docker image uh, just while you're doing the integration of the uh, your applications. Um, as I mentioned. Definitely, you need to secure your CI/CD process uh, while you are doing the building process. Uh, not to pass any like environment variables and hard-coded, hard-coded uh, uh, passwords into your Docker images. <coughs> Make sure your Docker images is like basis. The, all the variables and the config maps uh, com coming with the so totally different with the uh, image. No need to store anything in the image. Uh, the other one is the admission control, as I mentioned. That is the feature which is coming with the Kubernetes, which you can control more, um, control accessing, uh, Kubernetes, uh, control the uh, access levels from the Kubernetes. Let's say you have multiple uh, image registries. You can uh, control your access for, from the admission control. Only download the images from those registries, not download the stuff from the others. Let's say somebody has vulnerable pod running on your application. So it's trying to download some um, image from the different uh, vulnerable uh, registry that will be save you. So that will be more uh, important because if you guys know about Docker in Docker, you can run the Docker in Docker in your uh, Docker images. That's also the other thing. You can block that one using, uh, like you, you can block the um, uh, image uh, registry like this. So, and make sure your image is running on the immutable way. So don't put any uh, images like node uh, release. Uh, latest, uh, better to pass the tags based the release wise, but better to use this hashtag uh, uh, immutable immutable hashes to download the images. What that doing is you can generate the hash, which is identify what is the actual, um, it like MD5, it's check the, uh, uh, let's say it's a hash actually. So let's say when you, uh, when you, uh, if you, up, uh, if you upload your, um, uh, Docker image into your uh, Docker registry. The, at that time, it generate that hash that point to that particular version. Uh, let's let's say if you're running the uh, let's say your application is auto scaling, it download the latest uh, the particular version. The always it check this hash is uh, equal to the uh, uh, Docker image which is which is running on your registry. That is more important. So not only that, I didn't mention in here. So the other thing, oh, okay, that is the image. So these are the other main concerns, uh, admission controls you can set up. So always pull images. So, so uh, that part also really good, but uh, that will be, um, if you are set up in the cache, that's also good. But sometimes depending on your application, check whether how much time it take, take to download the image. So make sure that is good uh, admission control uh, for downloading the image each and every time. If something, some guy uh, attacking your environment and it always download the image, that will be better secure your env environment. Um, there are a lot of other context, uh, security context, uh, so you can set up through the admission control. So you can go through this link and go one by one and what are the features uh, you need to implement and you can go through that. So uh, the other one is uh, I just need to talk about the uh, assets, uh, accessing uh, access privileges for the containers. So definitely. Uh, when you design the containers, I think definitely you guys uh, previous uh, uh, Docker uh, security presentation definitely go through these things. No need to have a read uh, access for uh, uh, better to have a read only access and uh, do not uh, run any applications as a root. Uh, do not allow privileges uh, privilege escalations. Uh, do not uh, have the default mask uh, proc directory so mount into your uh, images. Do not use host network. That means uh, let's say if you have 
uh, that means uh, host network means uh, the network which is running on your nodes and network which is running on your pod should be separate and uh, that will be uh, easy uh, if something uh, network level lab attack happen that will be secure your environment and uh, <coughs> other thing is you can set up either uh, drop unused unused un uh, unnecessary packages uh, and the S you can enable the selenux or apams in your uh, more control and um, use service accounts as i previously mentioned for running in your pod which only have the proper access to in your service um, do not mount any credentials if it is not needed um, like uh, and do not mount uh, service account credentials into the containers if do not needed to necessary uh, do not need to access to the api uh, kubernetes api so these are the generic generic things you need to consider <coughs> what you can do is uh, so these are the points you need to set up but within your apply within your organization you can create a policy so what are the things you need to uh, establish your environment so each and every deployment if you can write a, write a custom there are a lot of custom tools you can uh, make sure you are implemented properly check whether your policies in the right way in the your containers make sure it is running on if something not uh, happening uh, something implemented uh, without that policy so you not need to push into the production so that is the more important definitely that is the one of uh, devsecops uh, culture which we need to set up in our environments so so the uh, the eight uh, main concern is audit logging and alerting so each and every application not only the kubernetes if you have the production environment the first thing is you need to set up uh, proper login and also alerting so if you have eks it has a feature you can enable the audit logs uh, push into the cloud watch so if you need uh, to enable into the like uh, um, uh, elk stack or sumologic or whatever gray log or whatever they definitely support there are a lot of uh, aws integrations with that so you can push your logs into whatever your central login check whether you need to enable the cube um, um, uh, you need to go for the uh, you need to go for the um, uh, you need to enable the uh, audit logs if you are using kops definitely there are a parameter you need to pass like this so there are a lot of other uh, parameters you need to pass to get the proper login uh, audit login let's say the api login and the controller login coming with different different ways uh, you can have a different tags for that and passing through the uh, your uh, logging environment better to have a dashboards if something going wrong let's say you are getting uh, more error logs for your api so you can get an alert for your um, um, monitoring guys and check whether what is happening uh, like what are the failures like api errors timeouts stuff like that so you need to have a better uh, ui for that so to do in that you can use um, like sysdict felco is the another tool you can set up in the kubernetes uh, there are a lot of other tools so you can get the event uh, um, event uh, event details from the kubernetes if something somebody running uh, let's say somebody running a exe command let's say somebody running uh, get the logs somebody running the um, uh, list the data you are uh, search stuff like that you can gather all the information uh, you can set up a proper uh, audit uh, uh, policy like this depending on the application uh, depending on the requirement let's say if, if you needed all the logs and status config map details and stuff like that so all the uh, audit uh, all, all the requirements you can set up as this not only that you can control from that you are audit log uh, tool uh, wise let's say you have a sumo logic you can control the sumo logic uh, side or if you have a elk side if elk you can control the elk side uh, having a proper filtering there and make sure you can easily see your audit logs uh, depending on your component uh, depending on your issue so there is a you can do the network level um, analysis so, so this is nice tool uh, inspector uh, gadget that that is really nice tool you can see live um, if you if you are doing like debugging and stuff like that you can use this tool to see what are the network traffics running on uh, that is really cool thing so you can use this tool also if you need it so so as i mentioned the monitoring so you need to concern these areas when you are getting the alerts you need to make sure you have the proper alerting and you have the proper logging so logging everything is not good always but logging everything is good uh, if you 
properly manage the logging filters and you have the proper view, easily can see the issues. So most of the people have debug logs, like most of the, you know, when you're doing developing the application, enable the debug log in production, you need to pay a lot of uh, money for the like Sumo Logic or New Relic to, or AWS to uh, paying more attention, uh, paying more unnecessarily. I feel like better to manage your logs properly and uh, make sure you fit filter better. If you are not using those logs, make sure you can archive somewhere. If something going wrong, you can uh, 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 you can get the details from there. So uh, nine uh, topic. Uh, so that is the Kubernetes deployment phase and running uh, runtime uh, security. So when you are deploying something, let's say you are deploying through the Helm or you are deploying through the Git or <coughs> like WebNet, you, you're deploying to the Spinica, whatever tool you use to deploy the Kubernetes. So you need to make sure you deploy it properly and better secure there. So for that case, you need to have proper isolation your applications. As I mentioned, you need to use different environment for the different tenants. So make sure you isolate your environment per, um, per, per environment basis, the clusters per environment basis. So if not, you need to have definitely within the cluster, you need to have different namespace, isolate uh, your applications with the different namespace. Let's say you have multiple projects, multiple applications we are running on different namespaces, which only need to communicate each other. Make sure you isolate the namespace properly. And within the namespace, <coughs> uh, within the namespace, once you set up that, you need to put a proper network policy and uh, for the manage your network. So as I mentioned, and also put a bit proper RBAC uh, implemented so to access the different services. Uh, the second thing is you need to uh, secure your pipeline. As I mentioned, when you have a pipeline, when you're passing your variables, so better to not to put in the environment uh, variables, let's say, and also when you're running the pipelines, if you have the logs in the pipeline, it could be Bamboo, it could be your GitLab, it could be whatever Circle CI, so whatever, most of the new uh, CI tools, they already um, disable those credentials, but if you're running in your own, definitely disable your credentials, printing on the your logs, uh, which if it is if it is doing now, definitely clear your logs. So that will be trouble in future, somebody can read the logs. So the other one is the resource limitations. So when you, when you set up the Kubernetes, and when you're doing the deployments, consider about the resource, which, what kind of resource you needed. So let's say if you're running on microservice, which is, um, uh, which is running on, let's say Java, um, uh, Java application, let's say Java 11. So when you're running the application, you can fine tune and you can harden in your application with what kind of memory it needed. And the performance wise, make sure you limit the performance according to your requirement, not giving the more, uh, more limited, uh, more, more resource to that pod to run the stuff lot. Better to make sure you properly set up HPA, not only the pods uh, in the Kubernetes cluster itself, like node scaling also. Uh, better to make proper alerts. So let's say you have uh, 50 nodes. After 50 nodes, you can make an alert. So if it is something vulnerable happening, so you, you can easily know about uh, uh, before if something going wrong. So other point is the network policy I already mentioned. So better to have a proper network policy set up in your pod level and also the cluster level, which only can talk to whatever application you needed. So that thing mainly you need to consider about um, uh, ingress and whatever uh, ingress you are running on your application, which communicate uh, different namespaces. As example, when you're running on Nginx ingress or you are running on traffic ingress, so you are running on whatever other ingress running on your uh, Kubernetes, which have more privileges, make sure you tidy up the privileges which you, you want to run, uh, which you which traffic need to access. Um, same as the ingress also. I'm encouraged if you have a Kubernetes cluster, don't expose the Kubernetes cluster into the outside using the load balancers or something. Better to isolate the Kubernetes cluster into the uh, through the API gateway or one, uh, uh, especially the API gateway, whatever, whatever AWS or whatever. Uh, AWS or whatever API gateway that will be secure your uh, Kubernetes cluster, especially if, if you using any load balancers like this, better to have a, a TLS termination, HTTP termination on the uh, your uh, load balancers. You can use this tool 
end pool for review your um, uh, network policies. So that will be help you to review your policies and make sure you are putting the right policy in the right place. So the other thing is uh, other thing is no need to definitely thinking about the third party access. Anyway, if you're using the Kubernetes cluster or whatever environment, the AWS or whatever cloud, you need to communicate the third parties. You need to uh, communicate the different APIs in the outside environment. You need to talking about the Kubernetes AWS resources like S3, like DynamoDB, whatever um, Kinesis, whatever other tools, other resources which is running on the uh, Kubernetes. So how do you communicate that? How are you giving the access for that? So recently, uh, AWS, uh, give you the uh, AWS controller uh, for the Kubernetes. Um, uh, it's kind of a resource you can create in the Kubernetes level. That will be great. But I know you guys not implemented yet in your production environment. For I hope you guys definitely using the proper IAM permissions and proper control uh, uh, for the AWS resources which you need to access, like Cube to IAM or something like that. Uh, not only that, if you're accessing like third-party access. Definitely make sure you guys using either um, uh, allowing only the, your net gateways. Let's say you are accessing the databases, like uh, better to have either like Mongo or something like that. Better to have uh, HTTPS uh, access to the Mongo because it's supposing that. So if you're using the uh, third party, um, like um, through definitely should be uh, through the VPC, uh, VPC peering uh, through those third party. If you can do that, that will be great. If not, if any uh, public API is better, better to only um, whitelist your um, net gateways that only can access. So that is really good. Uh, if you are, uh, if you are not only the whitelisting wise in the their end, in the UI end also, you need to control which application, uh, which APIs you are going to access. That's also really important when you uh, when you uh, when you uh, have a production clusters with different uh, integrations. So uh, to do that, actually, I have to mention the admission control also you can use to control, use that to control those external access. Uh, that is really cool thing. You can use that uh, to access the uh, outside uh, URLs and stuff like that. You can, you may use admission control for that thing also. Uh, uh, not only that, uh, uh, if, you are, if you are using uh, other resources, as I mentioned, IAM uh, and stuff like that, I, uh, other resources you need to properly use IAMs, uh, IAM roles properly, and also the proper uh, ACLs and the security groups. And if you have a VPC peering or private links, definitely make sure you are putting the right access only for particular VPC. So that will be um, uh, that will be a mess if something going wrong. Uh, if you have uh, multiple integrations with the with the production environment. Um, uh, last, last one uh, at not least. So time is uh, going really fast. So anyway, I'm trying to um, give the few informations about the credentials and the certs also. So that is that is my last point. Um, talking about the Kubernetes or whatever environment, you need to make sure your certs are in proper way. So in the Kubernetes, uh, you can um, let's say you are use Kops. Or like, let's say you are using EKS, you can use AWS uh, uh, Kubernetes secrets. So secret is not actually the whole kind of thing. I would say encrypted thing. It's like a uh, base 64 encoded. But let's say if you are uh, if you have the uh, Kub uh, Kubernetes secrets, if some developer uh, accidentally have the access to the view or access or something like access to the search, they can easily see the search. So. Uh, I'm encouraged to not to, if you are using these, um, if you need to, uh, if you don't have any other things, definitely go for AWS secrets. So if you need to secure your environment a little bit more, definitely you need to use tools like for more other tools like to encrypt your environment. Uh, like the better one is the Vault, which is HashiCorp product, which you can use to uh, working with the Kubernetes stuff supposed to work. If not, so you can use AWS, if it is AWS, definitely you can use AWS Secret Manager. You can call AWS API, get the secrets there, implement there while you're doing the pipeline or deployment process. So if it is not, you can use like another cloud providers like Cloud KMS, if you're using Google. So if you're using Azure, Azure Vault. So if you're using other uh, open source tools, like you can use Vault, so if you can go for the enterprise. So you can use Seed Circuits, um, or if you, you can use Cred Stash, that's also, use AWS um, DynamoDB to create the certs. 
so that's also the open source tools which you can implement so so within the uh, within the certs definitely make sure your certs are up to date rotate properly and uh, make sure uh, you are you are running uh, your application uh, up to date certs so the other one is the pipeline security when you are when you are uh, other thing is the uh, git uh, actually source control pipeline security so if you have a source control running on the uh, git uh, git or oh, you are using the bib bucket if you have accidentally anybody can accidentally push your credentials into the um, your GitLab or somewhere your source code, that will be a bigger trouble. Uh, anyway, it could be happen anytime. So definitely make sure you can use like Git certs, like kind of tools which running on your uh, laptop to before going to uh, push your code into the your public uh, your repositories. Make sure you are not adding any certs into your GitLab. So uh, or whatever source control. So you may scan regularly your source control to check whether is any API keys uh, in your source control. So if you if you find out anything, definitely I'm encouraged to create the history, uh, delete the history also, so that otherwise if you delete it and commit it, the history you can see easily. So these are the not only the Kubernetes; these are the best practices when you are setting in the uh, actually GitOps environment. So as I mentioned, rotate your secrets each and every time, monitor them. You may have a policy, open open policy for to to the rotate in the certs. Um, it may be harder, but you need to do that so you need to you need to implement paper, proper pipeline to rotate in sorts and implement it so there are different ways you can do it in the aws also you can use lambdas to do that or oh, there are a lot of ways you can do that so admins definitely you should have a, a mfa enable in your aws account so which you have the uh, admin access to your aws uh, uh, node access for the kubernetes wise definitely nfa then we know about your credentials are not leaking out to other parties um the finally so always review your uh, uh, network policy iam permissions and all the pod access especially the pod security so you can definitely set up the pod security for in the kubernetes wise make sure your pods are secure not running uh, vulnerable stuff and not having the um, unnecessary access into the pod running as a root or like stuff like that and putting the uh, putting the stuff into the environment variables, which you can see easily. Get pods and all list pods. Uh, get pods and see the credentials stuff like that. Make sure you are not doing that. Uh, secure your um, pods properly at the deployments properly as well. Uh, you may use different types of tools to control your AWS resources. You can use either AWS config to control your AWS configuration uh, resource configurations to check whether you are. Uh, Managing your resources in proper way, proper tagging and proper uh, configurations are there. If something change, you may notify. I know it is really expensive, but there are a lot of other ways, open source tools you can use. Uh, audit to RBAC also you can use for the uh, 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 you can use for the audit your RBAC uh, RBAC stuff and uh, Pro Prolo you can use for the your you know, audit your AWS uh, account that will be help you. That's an open source tool. Uh, you can run uh, your own uh, using the AWS API keys and check whether if you have any issues in your uh, roles or access policies like S3 policies and stuff like that. Because you are using uh, Kubernetes with the AWS, you need to make sure other integrations also secure. So other components also secure. Uh, actually, I go a little bit faster uh, today because I need to cover a uh, few steps in here. It's a little bit tough to uh, giving you a more information about the security. I'm really happy actually if I can do some kind of a session with like more times. So with like one day session or something, but I know it's really hard to doing that like this. So definitely if you are if you are really keen to know about the Kubernetes security and stuff like that, go through with the public uh, um, Kubernetes uh, uh, blogs and also the uh, Slack channels. And especially, I encourage you to uh, listen to the uh, Google podcast. Uh, that is really good. So you you, you will be uh, get the uh, new uh, issues and new features which is having in the Kubernetes. So uh, anyway, I, I feel like I cover what I want to do today. So, but I know it's a little bit faster, and and also it's uh, uh, it's a little bit uh, harder for like uh, developers or some guys who are uh, beginning to the Kubernetes. 
but i feel like i uh, i may give some idea about you guys so to giving you a better understanding of the main pain points in the kubernetes so anyway uh, guys uh, if you have any questions i'm happy to answer if you have a time so uh, nilesh uh, um if if you can uh, you can hand over uh, i i am happy to hand over you if anybody uh, need to answer any questions so if you have any chat uh, yeah uh, yeah i can i can yeah uh, so one one person one person is asking a question he's asking whether it's possible whether it is possible to do any kind of isolation to affected pods on k8 level if, while an attack is going on so he's asking uh, a question like that how would you handle such a scenario so let's say if you know about the pods uh, so it's depending on the attack actually so let's say attack means like i don't know what kind of attacks he's saying like let's say that pod is vulnerable definitely the docker image is vulnerable so don't need to run in the kubernetes so what you can do is uh, either you can go for the release for that pod but if you need to isolate so the thing is if you are running a pod definitely you can you can you can use network policies you can use the admission control to not to having uh, like rbac not to having uh, access to the kubernetes api like uh, which uh, which control like master nodes or whatever other apis pod can control like that vulnerable guy can control so the application as i mentioned if you set up proper uh, docker perspectives in your application definitely let's say if you have the um, so it's a little bit little bit hard question to answer because the thing is i don't know what kind of attacks is going on but i will i will answer for different ways let's say you have vulnerable docker image which uh, has like let's say uh, which trying to um, do some vulnerable thing to your application not the kubernetes uh, you can definitely uh, control uh, using your uh, network policies and stuff like that but definitely i am encouraged to uh, not to run it in, in your community as well what you can do is uh, either you can uh, create suddenly like uh, uh, different node uh, yeah that's also not making any sense if you create a new different uh, node group that also have a vulnerable access into the your community cluster you, you don't have any chance so that's a little bit hard so make sure definitely if it is something going wrong in your pods definitely make sure not run it in your production environment trying to isolate uh, from the uh, environment as you can so best thing is you can use better network policy uh, and check whether so as i mentioned uh, you can you can if you if you properly set up your event uh, uh, logs from the kubernetes you can see whether that pod uh, trying to access your environment or like trying to communicate to your masters or api uh, stuff like that if yes better to you can uh, uh, you can put uh, you know uh, either you can uh, destroy that application with running on your uh, your your environment if not if it is not accessing if it is only like let's say if it is auto scaling suddenly uh, trying to you know uh, like it's a memory leak or something like that it's not need to worry about too much but if it is really attack definitely you need to worry so yeah hopefully um, he got the answer yeah and um, and another thing is that running uh, you know running running a uh, running container sandboxes right if if the container is affected uh, you can you can run uh, either gvisor or kata containers or something like that and then 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 it won't affect the node and the rest of the containers that are running yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that that's 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 also another solution but the only thing is uh, let's say uh, if we don't know what kind of vulnerability is there let's yeah. say if you are you are your kubernetes is vulnerable so let's say let's say tila kind of thing so that is that is we don't have any chance to do that either you are running on your container in your application so that will be not to get that kind of chances like it's depending on yes it's it's that is another thing you can do so yeah yeah is there any questions guys uh yeah guys do you have any questions i mean you can either type it here or you can just unmute yourselves and ask uh 
I think uh, we, I don't see any other questions. To be honest, Kasun, uh, you sort yeah. of covered everything. Like when you went slide by slide, I had questions, and then the next slide, you sort of answered those questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's really hard to like uh, having uh, creating these slides because. Uh, the first day I thought, think about it, it's like a two hour thing. Then I created because these kind of slides, uh, which I already, uh, you know, uh, did the uh, webinar in the in Auckland. So it is out three hours. So I today I covered it one hour. It's yeah. really fast because it has some uh, actually it has some um, uh, uh, like uh, practice uh, stuff. Uh, I can uh, like demo stuff is there. So mm. today I can't do that. So so yeah. sorry about that. Then. Uh, that's why I share some slides, so with some commands. Uh, I think, uh, Kasun, I think maybe next uh, we will have another sh session where you can do a demo also, and then we can sort yeah. of like cover a few slides that you want. Like we can, we can yeah, have definitely, definitely. Maybe we can. So yeah. we can sort of have a security series if we want to. So uh, we can, we'll, we'll do another one neatly where you would do a demo. And yeah. sort of like show practically, like you already showcased the issues and sort of like the workarounds or how to how to uh, mitigate those. But let's do a demo in the next session so that uh, you show yeah. them how to you know harden the nodes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think that would really help the community. Yeah, definitely. So that is the main main things. So you can find out a lot of things in the documented things in the Google or whatever. But we need to think about how we're going to implement. And while we implement, in there are some number of issues. It could be some number of issues while while you implement. Yeah. So anyway, so hopefully uh, you guys happy with what I did today. So yeah, yeah. So one last question, cousin. Okay. Just just last one. Okay. Uh, um, like. You, you are mostly invested in AWS. So when yeah. you run Kubernetes in AWS, like, would you recommend to run it in EKS or do you do you recommend to use something like Rancher and run it uh, run it with VMs? Uh, uh, that is actually it's it's depending on your requirement. Like the EKS also have a lot of limitations. Like, mm. uh, you know, EKS integration with other like let's say if you have a EKS with uh, definitely if you want to as example uh, if you want to do the like uh, expose your uh, ingress endpoints you may need to use private links and net gateway and uh, attach into the aws api gateway there are a lot of e things uh, you need to consider and sometimes uh, you know if you going to uh, you know there are a lot of limitations that's the only one i mentioned and especially when you are upgrading the cluster sometimes uh, uh, i recently had an issue with uh, when with the eks so once we upgrade the cluster, some ingresses are uh, not propagate properly, and some we need to do it manually. Like so, I got a lot of issues while I'm doing with uh, EKS, um, with especially with the integrate with other third-party applications. Like still, uh, it's developing, and the API gateway also in the AWS that's also developing. But let's say if you have a different API gateway, that won't be different problem. So it's depending on the requirement, to be honest. So if you have like uh, uh, if you if you want to manage your environment uh, more, and if you want to uh, customize a little bit more, uh, definitely you need to go like Keops or whatever uh, tool you need to deploy. But if you go for Rancher, the Rancher give you like different uh, um, uh, different types of features. Like you can have a deployment, so you don't have a e case like deployment process. Like they will give you small features for the deployments. You need to worry about that. So uh, yeah, that's pros and cons. So, yeah, depending on, I think it's depending on your budget and depending on your, how about how many uh, 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 people who involved with the management for the Kubernetes cluster, let's say, depending on the resource uh, and also the price wise and also your, uh, you know, uh, the application availability and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, that makes, that makes sense. Yeah. So uh, and yeah, I think I think yeah because I have also used EKS, AKS, and GK. I think EKS, it's it's a little. I think it's still getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. You know, this EKS CDL recently upgraded. No, so yeah. they don't have like still they don't have any like if you need to upgrade the you need to up, uh, update the node uh, um, node groups. You need to have to create an Ebron node groups and you need to move it. You need to do it a little bit manually sometimes. I mean, manually means you can set up a pipeline. 
but it's a little bit painful like kerbs you can do it one command or something yeah it's, it's like yeah mm. it it is getting there to be honest yeah yeah but i think yeah and and the other thing is uh, kasun uh, yeah sorry i said the last question no last no that's fine that's fine <laughs> okay uh, so in in your slides you mentioned uh, you mentioned open source cloud native software and also you mentioned uh, aws specific sort of tools yeah. so when people are adopting to kubernetes and then r- running in on eks or whatever uh, what should they give priority should they give priority to aws uh, tools or should they give priority to uh, cloud native tools which means that uh, that they can s- sort of like go into hybrid cloud solutions if they want to like yeah, go into actually, on-premises or yeah so that's a good question so that is actually for me my perspective i was trying to go for the native first because if it is open source we don't need to pay for anything so but the other thing is the painful thing is if something going wrong how we can react that so so anyway the, the mm. aws always encourage to use to use their their resources and their their tools like that's why they always combine each other you can't do it without like you can't do it uh, you can't integrate the uh, api gateway without having a uh, network load balancer you know stuff like that so they always try to give you uh, uh, try to use their try to actually uh, enforce you to use their resources uh, and uh, that's also sometimes trouble uh, but but i'm always trying to uh, suggest you uh, like working with especially kubernetes it has a lot of community based uh, uh, cloud native tools so if you kind of try that definitely you need to try it and uh, if it is if it is uh, if it is um, uh, if any tool uh, mostly pe- people were reviewing properly and if has not issues uh, and uh, stuff like that so so that maybe better to go for that uh, and try it first so if not if you if you if you painful in the time and time being and the resource wise for managing the kubernetes you may go for the aws resource so but it's still i'm feeling like uh, kubernetes eks and the other integration wise still it's not strong to use production environment with the different uh, you know the kubernetes uh, like like uh, like uh, uh, like um different types of integration with the kubernetes i feel is still the aws yeah. is still growing up we need to consider some other tools yeah yeah Th- yeah, yeah that's what i thought too actually as example like if i have time to, i just describe one thing so let's say in future oh. definitely like let's say you have a queue running on in uh, sqs and you need to auto scale your uh pods through that queue like you know like we use like pargate or something so they will have another feature like uh, you will be have a resource through the kubernetes like which you can integrate your auto scaling depending on your queue or depending on your alerts or whatever if if if, if aws have that kind of features in future definitely so it will be a it will be yeah. a major hit it for the other yeah 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 I, th- i think even even google or azure doesn't have that functionality even though they have pub sub and everything else but doesn't really have the kubernetes integration yeah yeah still so, still still every every uh, class uh, every uh, cloud and uh, cloud uh, providers they are integrating uh, working yeah. with that yeah like looking at the architecture it's very difficult also to integrate something like that yeah. within kubernetes yeah. to uh, yeah there are so many things involved like if you can get events running like you can get k native or yeah that's otherwise of... otherwise they need to customize total kubernetes yeah uh, yeah <laughs> yeah it will be a different tool then yeah then it will be a different and then again there would be vendor locking <laughs> yeah definitely definitely yeah. Uh, yeah that's true 